for your son with eternal eyes why was he shout a Jericho pulling down hallelujah Luke chapter 4 16 to 21 and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel. Uh -huh. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To heal the broken hearted. To heal the broken hearted. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ was called to do. To heal all manner of problem. And as soon as he finished reading that particular verse, he closed it and sat down. To heal. So today, deliverance titled The Power of Healing. The Power of Healing. When we say healing, what do we mean? Healing is the removal of pain. Healing is the removal of pain. It doesn't matter the pain you are going through today. Today, that pain shall be removed. When we say healing, what do we mean? Healing, the return of, to its original purpose. It was not in its original purpose. That's why you needed the healing. Your health was not in its original purpose. Your finance was not in its original purpose. So returning to original purpose is, I would say, healing. When we say healing, what do we mean? Healing is to return arrows back to the senders. Today, arrows shall be returned back to the senders. I'm not hearing your amen. I would say healing. What do you mean? Healing is the resurrection of good things. The resurrection of good things. All the good things in your life that the enemy has killed shall resurrect today. When the healing power comes, resurrection will take place. In your finance, in your career, when we say healing, what do we mean? Healing is to connect to the supernatural. Is to connect to the supernatural. There are two things: natural, normal, supernatural are things that cannot be explained. And when we talk about supernatural, supernatural can be in a satanic way. Because magic is supernatural. Magic is supernatural. So, connected to the supernatural in a godly way. That is divine healing. Shout hallelujah. And there are three major sources of healing. Three major sources of healing. Number one, source. Satanic. Satanic healing comes with padded. It's normally padded. Satanic healing is normally padded. Example. If Satan gives you 10 naira, he gets 1 million naira from you. If you go to Satan for healing, he will put more sickness in your body. So satanic Healing is a no-go area. Shout out, Leah. The second method is your 
personal healing. This is, you can do it this way, maybe you are feeling very sick and suddenly you sleep and you wake up and you get yourself. Or maybe you have, your blood pressure is going up because of you are very obese. Then you start doing exercise and your blood pressure drops. That is your own kind of healing. This is not supernatural healing. Then the third part of healing is divine healing, which is the best kind of healing. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap of love. <laughs> divine healing only comes from God, not from man. It comes from God. Divine healing. This is God taking over and handling the healing. The blessing of God make it rich and added no sorrow. God cannot heal you and add pain to it. When he heals you, he heals you perfectly. Shout hallelujah. Today, you shall receive divine healing. I'm not hearing your amen. Important facts about healing. Number one. Permanent healing only comes from God. Permanent healing only comes from God. Only God can give a permanent healing. Man, even doctors can never give you permanent healing. Only God can give you permanent healing. Fact number two. Second Kings chapter 13. Second Kings 13. Read 20 and 21. And Elijah died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in the, of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast a man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was laid down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Shout hallelujah. So, fact number two. Sometimes, God does not need your faith to heal you. Sometimes, God does not need your faith to heal you. Look at the scenario we just read right now. Elijah, Elisha died and was buried. Then suddenly they were conducting burial for another man. The Bible didn't indicate whether the man is born again or not. It didn't indicate. While they were doing the burial, the enemy came. When they saw the enemy coming to come and attack them, what did they do? They now threw the dead body into where uh, 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 um, Elisha was buried. They didn't throw it because they wanted Elisha to receive it. And they didn't want, they wanted the man to receive it. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. So they were in that confusion. They threw him there. Number one, they didn't have faith that the man was, will, will resurrect. So, how did the man wake up? Is it the faith of the people that threw him in there? Okay. Is it the faith of the man that died? Or is it the faith of Elisha that is already, he sat on the bone? Is God. God can decide to do anything, anytime, anyhow. He doesn't need your permission to do it. He can say this man standing here will be the next president of Nigeria. Nobody can question it. Sometimes you don't even, some things you didn't ask for, God will just give it to you. Because God does not need to take permission from anybody to do anything. He is the Alpha, He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the unchangeable changer. God does not need permission to do what He wants to do. So sometimes, I'm not against faith preachers. I'm not against faith preachers. People say, eh, yes, eh, unless you have faith before you can receive miracles, unless you have faith. No, I'm sorry. 
I disagree with you. Yes. The Bible says without faith, no man shall see God. You have faith, yes. But even those that don't have faith, when God wants to do something, he does not need your permission to do it. A Muslim can come here for the first time. God decides to heal that and bless that Muslim. Shout hallelujah. Important facts number three. Luke 8, 43 and 44. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stands. The woman, there was so much crowd following Jesus. So much crowd. The woman just had faith that if only he thought the hem, of, if only she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus, she would be made whole. She came from behind and touched the garment, and she was made whole. So you can come from behind and receive a miracle. You must not be sitting in front to receive the healing. You can even be standing at the gate as the message is going on. You receive your healing. God works in mysterious way. The woman came from behind. She is not among those following Jesus. She just came from behind and stole her miracle. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. It doesn't matter where you're hearing my voice from. Any part of the world, today, you shall receive your healing. I'm not hearing your amen. So, Fact number one, permanent healing only comes from God, number one. Number two, sometimes God does not need your faith to heal you, number two. Number three, you can come from behind to receive your healing. Now, let me, let me go further. Okay, read it. I just want to, there's something I want us to, to get. Read it. Read it. I want, there's something I want us to pick there. Yeah. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, uh -huh. which has spent all her living upon physicians, uh -huh. neither should be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Uh -huh. And immediately her issue of blood stands. And the, Jesus the, the blood dried. Continue. Uh -huh. And Jesus says, Who touched, Who touched me? me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master. The multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me. And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not healed, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people, For what cause she hath touched him? And how she was healed immediately. Continue. Eh? And he said unto her, Listen to what Jesus said unto her, eh? Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. She was healed, but she was not made whole. As soon as she touched Jesus, she was instantly healed, but she was not made whole. Dr. Jesus, who is spiritual, knew that virtue has gone out of him. He knew that the woman had been healed, but he wanted the woman to testify. He needed the woman to make an open testimony, an open confession. It was when that woman made that open confession that said, your faith has made you whole. She was not made whole. She was only healed. When you are healed, affliction may come back again. But when you testify, you are now made whole. The 
The reason a lot of people, when God restores them or when God heals them, the problem comes back because they don't thank God for what he has done. You need to thank God for what he has done so that God can do more. When you don't thank God, the problem may resurface. That's why our Lord Jesus wanted to let the woman make an open confession. And she said it. Not that Jesus didn't know. Jesus knew that the woman was healed. For goodness sake. He, he the second in command in heaven. He already know what will happen that day. He already know that somebody will touch. If he didn't want that woman to testify, as not that thing touch, you look at the woman, you will know that this woman will be healed. Oh, no problem. But he wanted the woman to testify. There are a lot of people, God has done great in your life. You keep the testimony, suddenly the plea come back because you don't testify. A lot of women, God bless the foot of the woman, they don't testify, suddenly miscarriage. Many people, God healed them, they don't testify, sickness come back. You need to testify for God to seal the healing, for you to be made whole. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So fact number four. You can be healed but not made whole. You can be healed but not made whole. Fact number five. Isaiah 59. One and two. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. The Lord's hands is not shortened that it cannot heal you. But your sin has created a barrier. Your sin has created a roadblock. Your sin has mounted a big wall between you. And God. If only you can let go that sin, then God can do his own. But if you don't let go that sin, you cannot be healed. Shout hallelujah. Fat number six, Genesis 32. Read 24 to 28. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he tore the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. For day is breaking. Let me go. They don't break. Let me go. Uh -huh. And he said, I will not let thee go. I will not let you go. Except thy bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has that power with God and with man and has prevailed. Persistence. 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 He refused to give up. He wrestled with the angel. Jacob, from night till morning. The angel said, let me go. This is breaking. He said, no, I will not let you go. Let you break, I'll let you bless me. Some people, when they pray small, ask God for something, some night, they stop. The Bible says, pray without season. Continue to ask him. Because he's your only source. He's the only one that can give you a solution. Ask him. Continue. And he's going to answer your prayer request in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Important facts about healing. Second King chapter 4. Read from 8 to 17. And he fell on a day that Elijah passed to Shinon, where was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, 
Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in hither. And he fell on the day that he came hither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldn't thou be spoken for to, be, to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thy man of God, do not lie unto the handmaid. Shout hallelujah. Now, let me explain. Um, there's a man, there's a man of God called Elijah. Every time he's passing by. And he saw one beautiful house. It's owned by one wealthy man. And the wealthy man has a wife. So he went to the house and knocked on the door and told, listen, are you people blind? Every time I'm passing here, don't you know I'm a man of God? Can't you tell me to come here and eat food? It's okay, okay. Come and eat. He was passing on his own. On his own. And the woman said, Ah, I perceive this man is a man of God. And he, he invited her in and gave her food to and gave him invited him in and gave him food to eat. Every time man of God is passing, he will give him food. Every time man of God is passing, so when they told the woman to come, why not we build a small chamber, a small room for this man? So anytime he passes, he can stop over, sleep, rest, eat, shower, and continue his journey without the man of God asking for it. Without the man of God asking for it. When he did that, the man of God said, ah, this woman don't do this thing, no. Come. What do you want God to do for you? And the, Elijah, the his servant he has to say, ah, this woman, she's, she's married, or the husband is even old, but they've not got two children. And that was how the man of God blessed the woman. She became pregnant. So number six, your seed can produce your healing. Your seed can produce your healing. Not seed you sowed in a criminal altar, no. A seed sowed where the work of God is done. A seed sowed where free hospital, free school, like the testimony of that sister. The man called through a pastor in Abuja and said, I want to sow two million into the free hospital. Later again, three million, make it five million. And God removed cancer from the wife. So your seed can give birth to your miracle. I remember a testimony when we were in Eliosu. A woman without me asked because I, 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 I don't say, oh, eh, thus says the Lord, empty your bag. I don't do that. But the woman on her own went and emptied her account. I said, I want to sow. That was when we were building the Dr. Jesus City. I want to sow into this Dr. Jesus City. We are still in This is everything in my account. I was amazed. And she would do the cash. Say, knee down. Boom. That very month, she became pregnant. 
As I'm talking now, God, have, she's here. God has blessed her four kids. Your seed can produce your healing. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Important facts about healing. Some healing are instant. Some healing take process. Some healing are instant. Unconditional. Why some healing takes a process? Sometimes God will say instantly heal. Sometimes it takes a process. What, what I mean a process? If you go through the Bible, you see that there are some people Jesus healed. Receive your sight. The person just receives sight immediately. I mean, why there are some people Jesus said, he carries and put for their eye. Now, go and look for any river. Go and wash your eye. Process. Going to the river, washing the eye, is a process. Some healing can take place now as I'm ministering. As we're missing the healing service, some miracle will take place. Why some, pro some healing will take a process of you pick assignment, do the assignment, and become okay. Using the sand upon the eye, going to wash it is an assignment. It's a process. Shout hallelujah. But today, the Lord shall visit you. I'm not hearing your amen. I'm not hearing your amen. Important facts about healing. Your foundation can speak against your healing. Your foundation can speak against your healing. Maybe you come to church, you pray for anywhere, you receive healing. You go back to the house, the sickness comes back. I, I don't know. When I come to church, I pray for anywhere. When I go home, I can't pray for anywhere because some foundation are bad. Maybe the foundation is in building that place. Maybe some things in that place. Fat, stand up and pray this. Close your eyes. Take your spirit to your house. Take your spirit to your house. Are you in your house? Picture the house. Call the name, the address. Pray this. Every evil altar in number two, Greg Oboyfer Streets. Frustrating my healing. Scatter by fire. Every evil order in number two, Greg Oboyfer Streets. Frustrating my healing. Scatter by fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Every evil altar in my foundation. In number two, Greg Oboyfer Street. Speaking against my healing. Scatter by fire. In Jesus, I will pray. Please sit down. Important facts about healing. Environmental powers can stand against your healing. Environmental powers can stand against your healing. Mark chapter 8. Read from 22 to 25. Now, I want you to pay attention attentively and listen to this Bible verse. Uh -huh. And he come here to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and he besought him to touch him. Amen. Now, I want to be explaining it one by one. Hmm? As you are reading it. Please come. One more person, come. I want to understand this thing now. Hmm? Now, 
Start again. You, you will bring this man because you, are, you can see. But this is the blind man. And people brought him. Come, I need one more person. These two people brought this man. Eh? Just one person hold up for him, one person hold up and bring him to me. Now, read, read again. And he come to Bethsaida. And he come to Bethsaida. Uh -huh. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. They brought a blind man to Jesus. That is, I can never be like Jesus. Never Jesus, but example. They bring the blind man to Jesus. Uh -huh. And, and they sought took, him to touch him. Uh -huh. And he took the blind man by the hand. And, and he, instead of him to touch the blind man, he took the blind man from them. Continue. Uh -huh. And led him out of the town. And led him out of the city, out of the town. Trek. Go outside the city. Outside the city. He took the blind man outside the city. Uh -huh. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now, stay. Bring him. When they brought the blind man to Jesus, Jesus now took pain, collected the man, carried the man outside the city. He didn't even tell the people with the man to bring the man. He got told, okay, uh, bring the man and follow me. No. He disconnected the man from the people and from the city and took him outside and healed him. Some environment, some people around you can choke your healing. There are many people, the reason why God has not given you fruit of the womb is because of the people around you. There are many people, the reason Lord has not blessed you with a life partner is people around you. Because if he gives it to you, those people will kill it. Even though they are the ones that are leading you. But God has seen that these ones cannot be here when the thing happen. There are some people, your environment, the place you are currently residing, can, you cannot be there to receive your miracle. You need to relocate. That is why the Bible says, to, uh, God told Abraham, Abraham, leave your father's house to a land where I will prosper you. Leave your... Does it mean that God cannot bless him in his father's house? God has the power to bless him in his father's house. But the father's foundation is idol worship. He needed to disconnect him. There are many people you could have prospered, but the people around you are the ones choking your prosperity. You need disconnecting. Stand up. Whosoever, oh Lord, that I must disconnect for me to be restored by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I disconnect from you. Oh, I'm getting another message. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, arise. Open my eyes. To know the people I'm supposed to disconnect. So that my restoration can manifest. I'm supposed to disconnect for me to be restored in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. In Jesus, we pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I disconnect myself, I disconnect my wife. I disconnect all my children 
from every bondage in my environment. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, I disconnect myself. I disconnect my wife. I disconnect all my children from every bondage in my environment. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus, we pray. Please sit down. Important facts about healing. Causes can speak against your healing. Curses. Gehazi committed something. He took a gift that was given to his master, Elisha. After Elisha rejected it, he collected it. Then Elisha made a pronouncement, a curse. The leprosy of Naaman shall cliff unto you he could have stopped there. He said, he didn't stop there. He said, the leprosy of Naaman shall cleave unto you and unto your seed forever. What did the seed of Gehazi do? They were not there when their father took the things. Causes can empower affliction. When there is a cause attached to an affliction, you need to break the curse first before the affliction can go away. When there's a curse, maybe your wife, example, let me just give an example now. Maybe somebody spent money, trained your wife in university, and when your wife has graduated, you say, no, I won't marry you. Why? You're not told. But when I was trained, you didn't know I was not told. You say, yes. So you go and marry, you say, it's okay. I said, God, I've spent money. Oh, any man will marry you. No go see money. Or maybe your husband promised somebody to marry. And they didn't marry the person. And suddenly he marries you. Say, ah, because you left me. You will not, you will not have any cry of baby in your house. If those curses are not broken, seeking for healing will not have strong effects. When there is a curse attached to healing, attached to a sickness, if that curse needs to be broken for the healing to manifest, stand up. Every curse Activating affliction against me. Break. You are going to pray three times. After I pray, you break, 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 break. Every curse. Activating affliction in my life. Break. Open your mouth and begin to pray. So pray. Every curse I inherited from Wako compound. Maybe something the parents did, like he has it. Say, ah. The affliction, the leprosy of Naaman 
shall cleave unto you and unto your seed. Whether my parents didn't know any or know any, pray like this. Every affliction I inherited from one compound. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Break! Open your mouth and begin to pray. So pray. I'm getting another message. Every attack I am currently receiving because of my son name. Only because you are answering one call. There is a problem in that family. There is Powers pursuing everybody family just because you are a member of this family. Every attack I am currently receiving because of my son name. Scatter by fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray. That's we pray. It's done. Important facts about healing. There are different gifts God distributed. There are those with healing gift, teaching gift, pastoring gift. Healing gift. Shout hallelujah. There are different gifts. God has distributed. And once you know that gift and you concentrate on that gift, you find out you will not struggle much in ministry. Shout hallelujah. One thing I know, God has given me the gift of healing and restoration. When I talk to my pastor friends, I tell them, listen, there is a gift called the gift of power. For you to have this gift, you must have compassion. The Bible says, all the people that Jesus healed, say, and Jesus was moved with compassion. Without compassion, you can't get power. You can't be a wicked man and you have power. Oh, I want to be performing miracles like opium. You must have compassion. You must be moved with compassion. You must be ready to discomfort yourself to comfort others. You must be able to displease yourself to please others. Then you can get power. Power is not something you go to the mountain and go and fast and pray and receive power. Mm -mm. It's a gift from God. When you have it, you have it. You don't need to fast to have it. Shout hallelujah. It doesn't need like one hour prayers. 
for one thing to be done. One that is power, you just speak it. Receive. <laughs> Amen. Go. You don't need to rah, 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 long prayer. No long prayer. Shout hallelujah. If you go through the Bible, you see all the people that Jesus healed. He just spoke the word. He didn't play wrong. One hour. <laughs> He spoke the word. Amen. Shout hallelujah. But if you want that power, you must have compassion. You must be moved with compassion. That's what God looks like. Compassion. 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 That is the secret of power. Shout hallelujah. Important facts about healing. Numbers 21. Numbers 21. Read 8, 6 to 8. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bite the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpent from us. Shout hallelujah. And God sent serpents. And God sent serpents. To bite them. Sometimes God will allow some problem into your life to draw your attention. God will allow some sickness. If God looks at maybe you are a good man, please come. Now, Pastor Madi is a good man with a kind heart. And he has been serving God in truth and in spirit. And he's telling God, God, I need financial breakthrough. I need explosion. And God have looked at him and said, I'm going to give you explosion. But there's a problem. The foundation you are standing now cannot withstand the breakthrough. If I give you this money now, they will kill you. So God now will relocate him to where there is power. And now fortify his foundation, then give him blessing. God sometimes will allow some problem so that you can locate a strong church. There are many people, when you came to OPM, you don't even know how to pray before. Two of us. If I, if I say, if you know when you came to OPM, you don't know how to pray. Raise your hand up. Can you stand up? If you know, before you came to OPM, you don't know how to pray. You see? Please sit down. But because God is preparing you now, you came to OPM, you know how to pray. Now, he solves the problem. Now, prepares a solid foundation. For you to receive the breakthrough. Because prayer is the key. It teaches you how to wake up in the midnight, pray something you've never done before. It teaches you how to do mercy prayer. You and him alone. Often, ah, how can I often? I, I'm expecting a call from Shell. I'm expecting a call from Ajib. On your phone. Since you've been expecting the call, how many calls has come? So now God now begin to prepare you, fortify you. You get that power. When you say, you solve that problem, then await the breakthrough that is coming. Shout hallelujah. So God sometimes allows some problem. So that he can draw you close to him. Many people.
people don't go to church before. Many people are not even born again. But it is problem. When they have problem, they begin to search for solution. Like the brother I gave a testimony today. They were looking for food in the womb. They started going from native daughter, native daughter, native daughter. And suddenly, God now blessed them with food of the womb. After how many years? Seven years. After going to different native doctors, they came to OPM, took assignment, bam, God blessed them with food of the womb. So, God has a reason why that problem is there. Shout, hallelujah. Shout, hallelujah. Important facts about healing. Humility brings healing, while pride makes many people to lose their healing. Humility. Humility brings healing. A lot of people are proud, 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 proud. You can't receive healing when you are proud. Shout hallelujah. Today, you shall receive healing. Healing of your body. Have you ever sat down and asked yourself, why every Sunday, testimonies, healing, deliverance, People are testifying of financial breakthrough, of healing. Have you ever, have you ever sat down to, to wonder? Do you think it's because of me? I don't get power. It is God is happy. Look at those children without hope going to 15 free school. God is happy. Look at the women that are going to hospital to go and deliver. God is happy. Look at the, these armed robbers, sex workers that are being removed from the street. God is happy. God is happy. And when God is happy, he releases power. That is why the kind of miracle that will happen today. Example. If your earthly father is happy, with you. Won't he give you anything you ask for? Sometimes I discomfort myself to comfort others. So that's why I can never be to be Even though that man bring one billion today, I bet you that one billion will not last two days because there are people that need that money. How many food, how many plates of food will I eat a day? I eat twice a day. Shout out, hallelujah. How many shoes do I wear? How many clothes? There are people that need it that are outside. There are people that are, be, if you know how many people eating from the free estate, people that are eating clothing, school, how many people that took Wayak this period? The amount of people, how much people's school fees overseas? is happy with OPM. <laughs> Lives are being transformed. Lives are being changed. Destinies have been restored. People that never dreamt of traveling to Kotonou, they are now schooling in Europe. Why would God not be happy? People that couldn't go to school in Nigeria, they're going there. God is happy. That is why healing will take place today. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want you now to talk to God. Ask God, is there any sin in my life? The Bible says, the Lord's hands is not shortened that he cannot save you. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear prayer. But your iniquities have separated you and God. Talk to God now. Is there any sin in my life that want to hinder my healing today? My financial healing, my marital healing, 
my spiritual healing, my emotional healing, in Jesus' name. Repeat after me, Father Lord. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. And I have done so many terrible things against you. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Remove my name from the book of death. And transfer it to the book of life. I promise. Starting from today. I will never go back to my old ways again. I will never go back to my sins again. Give me a second chance. In Jesus' name. Wonderful and great God said, well, if my people that I call my nation, I humble this and pray and seek my face. I'm totally for the okay ways. They will have from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and will heal their land. Heal the land of children today. Cleanse them. Wash them. Let them water and snow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Congratulations. You're not a new creature. All things have passed away. And never have become new. Pray like this. Every ladder that the enemy is using to climb to afflict me. I push you down. Every ladder that the enemy is using to climb into my life. I push you down. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus' name, pray. Strike them with madness that are praying against me. Oh God, arise! Strike them with madness that are praying against me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Jesus, don't pray. Generational sickness. Break and lose me. Generational sickness. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Break and release me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes. Jesus will pray. Every arrow of affliction fired into my finance. If you look very well, your finances are sick. Your finances are sick. Your finances are sick. Every arrow of affliction fired into my finances. Come out. Go back to your senders. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes. In Jesus' name, pray. I'm getting a message. Close your eyes. Take your spirit to your father's compound. I'm getting a message. Wicked powers in one compound that has vowed that I will end up like my father. We get powers in one walk on bond that has vowed that I must end up like my father. Are you God? Die! Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes.
Jesus said we will pray. Anything done spiritually for me to be afflicted. Whether in your finance, whether in your health, whether in your marriage, whether in your business, whether in your womb. Anything done spiritually for me to be afflicted by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I undo you. You are going to pray three times. After I pray, say, I undo you. I undo you. I undo you. Anything done spiritually for me to be afflicted by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I undo you. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Jesus will pray. Now open your two legs. Every poison circulating inside my system be flushed out now by the blood of Jesus. Every poison circulating inside my body be flushed out now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Jesus will pray. Truly, God is here. God is really here. Honestly, God is here. Truly, God is in OPM. I am a testimony and I am a witness. Are you tired of being single? Are you tired of looking for a good job? Are people calling you barren woman? Do you need salvation? Dr. Jesus is the answer. If church cannot change you, what do you do? Change your church. Change your church. Change your church. Come this Sunday morning before 8 a.m. and God's general, Apostle Chibuzo, will attend to you and give you prayer assignment and your story must change. Please don't know when the role of this individual is over. The role this pastor played in my life is over. It is time for me to move to my next level. Dr. Jesus in action. God is here. God is here.